Okay, I know this is a little different from my normal videos, but due to circumstances outside of my control, I am far behind where I wanted to be with my next recap video. So I decided to put this video out first because it's a lot quicker than reading a thousand or so pages for three books that make up the saga I'm working on, and then writing a recap. And this saga I'm working on also has to do with this video, as I will get into in a bit. So, let's talk about AI in sci-fi. I have seen many comments online saying things like, Every example we have of AI is evil. This is a very funny statement to me, as we have no past examples of AI in the real world. What they are referring to is fiction, not reality. And you can't use fiction as proof of anything in the real world. Even science fiction is not something to base the real world on. Sci-fi is science fiction because the background for the story should be based on real scientific evidence. Real world current understandings of science. But beyond that, it is just a fictional story to act as a vehicle to show off these scientific ideas. At least, that's how it works ideally. Lately, it seems to me that pretty much anything set in space or containing a robot or alien is considered sci-fi. I don't really agree with this definition of sci-fi. To me, stories like Alien or The Terminator are not true sci-fi. The first movie, in both of these examples, to me is just a horror movie. And the second is just an action movie. And this goes for both Alien and Terminator. But let's use Terminator 1 and 2 as an example. They use the robot, the Terminator, in the same way that Nightmare on Elm Street uses Freddy Krueger. There's no scientific explanation for how or why the robot functions. You could easily replace the robots with evil wizards or other fantasy creatures, and it would basically be the same story. To me, to be sci-fi, you have to have an explanation for how the robots function, why it's doing what it's doing, and I don't mean just motivation. What's the flaw in its programming that made it act this way? This is completely lacking in both the first and second Terminator movies. The T2 especially may as well function on magic for how it works. But let's ignore all that for now and get back to the question of is all AI in sci-fi evil? Let me use an example. Saying every time humans have created AI it's evil is like me saying every time we have encountered dragons they are monsters who eat people. Just look at Smaug from Hobbit or the movie Reign of Fire. Now most people would say to this, yeah, but dragons are not real, AI is. To that I have to say, oh, but we do have dragons. We have Komodo dragons and bearded dragons. I'm sure you're thinking, those are not dragons, those are lizards called dragons. Yes, exactly. We don't have real AI either. It does not make its own decisions. It's not sentient. And yes, it's pronounced sentient where I live. I'm not Southern or from the Midwest where they pronounce it sentient. So please don't, um, actually, me in the comments, please. What we have are comparative algorithms that are called AI. They don't think for themselves. They're just algorithms. We've had algorithms for longer than we have had computers. The first algorithm is thought to have been developed in ancient Mesopotamia around 4,500 years ago. The first computer algorithm was written by Ada Lovelace in 1840. These are not AI. They are not sentient. They do not think for themselves. So let's get back to my parallel. Are all dragons in fantasy evil monsters? Obviously not. We have shows like How to Train Your Dragon where dragons are not man-eating monsters. They are friends to humans. And in the same vein, we have benevolent AI in sci-fi. When most people think of Isaac Asimov and AI, they think of the movie I, Robot, which was very loosely based on a collection of short stories by the same name written by Asimov, and set very early on in the Robots and Foundation universe. But none of the short stories in that collection are about evil AI. They are about benevolent AI, or confused AI at worst. The first story in the book I, Robot, is about a loving AI caretaker who finds a way to reunite with a child he loves. The second story is resolved by the fact that the AI refuses to hurt a human being. The third story is about a robot who finds religion. In fact, none of the stories resemble the movie very closely. That was just Hollywood. There are a few aspects from different stories that they stole from the movie, like how one robot hid itself, similar to the scene in the movie where Sunny hides among the other robots in the factory, but that's it. 
In Asimov's universe, we have many other examples of benevolent AI, like R. Daniil Oliva, who spent thousands of years directing humanity to a perfect future at the cost of his own life. In fact, most, if not all, of the AI in the Robot and Foundation universe are benevolent. They are guided by the three laws of robotics. Law 1. A robot may not injure a human being or through inaction allow a human being to come to harm. Law 2. A robot must obey the orders given it by a human being except where such orders conflict with the first law. Law 3. A robot must protect its own existence as long as such protection does not conflict with the first or second law. Because of these three laws, there are no AI in Asimov's work that could be considered truly evil. Some are just confused about how to follow the three laws. Asimov is not the only sci-fi writer to have benevolent AI in his works. Right now, I'm working on a recap of Orson Scott Card's Homecoming Saga, where humanity is protected by a benevolent AI called the Oversoul for 40 million years. And the overarching problem in that saga is that the Oversoul is breaking down after such a long time, and the loss of the Oversoul will allow humanity to recreate the mistakes of the past. It is not an evil AI. Much like R. Daniel Oliva, it is the reason that humanity has lived in peace for as long as it has, and preventing the loss of this AI is the core problem, a direct opposite of movies like I, Robot, and Terminator, where the goal is to destroy the evil AI. So not only can we not use fiction as a guide for the real world, but the statement that all AI in sci-fi is evil is not even correct. So now that I have debunked that, let's move on to how these algorithms called AI are affecting us in the real world. So before I start this portion of the video, I want to say a few things. First, I've been thinking about making this video for a while, but I've been leery about it because I don't want to anger people. This channel is more about fun stories than it is about controversial issues, so I'm not trying to change anyone's mind, but I still do want to say my opinion. Call it wrong if you would like, but these are my thoughts on the subject, so please don't get too upset with me. Also, I would like to avoid controversies on this channel as much as possible, but some comments on my videos have said they don't like my channel because I use AI artwork for my images. These people seem to believe that I am taking jobs away from real artists. That couldn't be further from the truth. I simply don't have the funds to pay real artists. I don't know any artists personally, and my own skills are severely lacking, so my only option, other than drawing stick figures for you, is sites like Fiverr where you can commission work. However, for quality color images like the ones I use, it can cost as much as $300 for a single picture and take several days to over a week for it to be completed. I just can't afford the dozens of pics I would like to use for each video at that price. Even if I cut way back and only used, say, a dozen pictures per video per week, that would cost me around $14,000 a month. I don't make anywhere near that much, but I can afford the $30 a month for mid-journey. I work a full-time job at an animal shelter. I work there because I love animals, not for the money, obviously. So there was never the possibility that I could ever afford to pay artists for their work when you consider that cost. If you look at my older videos, I was just taking pictures I found online and using those. But I didn't want to steal other people's work nor get copyright strikes for using them. That's why I started using Midjourney. It was the only option in my budget. So as I said, I was never going to be able to use real artists, therefore I have not taken any jobs away from them. Maybe if my channel takes off, I will have enough money to pay them, but for now that's simply not a possibility. So if you look at it from that perspective, what I am doing is creating the possibility that I can pay those artists. As far as my channel is concerned, AI has not taken any jobs. It has just opened the possibility that one day I might be able to hire real artists creating jobs for them. I would love to be able to tell someone exactly what I want and have them draw it. It can be extremely frustrating to try and get the AI to give me what I want. Hiring people would drastically reduce my stress levels, but it would also massively increase the cost for each video. Which I'm paying out of pocket, by the way, at the moment. So, is what we currently call AI evil? I personally would say no. Does this mean it can never do anything bad? Well, obviously not. But if it does, that's the work of the programmers or the people using it, not this pseudo-AI itself. 
This is no different from a hammer. It's a useful tool in the right hands, but in the wrong hands, it can be a deadly weapon. Most things in life are like this. There are very few things that cannot be used for evil, but does that make hammers evil? I would say no. To me, AI is a useful tool to improve my channel, to make my content more enjoyable for you, the viewer. To a government, political party, terrorist organization, etc., it might be a tool to oppress or misinform, but these groups already have actual weapons. When the aircraft carrier was invented, did everyone say it was evil? When drones were invented, did everyone say they were evil? Both have killed thousands at this point, if not more. The algorithms we call AI will never kill anyone directly like those weapons do. But because of fictional stories, mostly put out by Hollywood, people are more afraid of it than they are of drones or aircraft carriers. Does this mean we should trust everything AI puts out? Obviously not. That would be the same as trusting every person who puts it to use. Since there are evil people, they can use it to do evil deeds. But as I already said, that doesn't make the AI any more evil than a hammer is evil. So will AI take away artists' jobs? In some cases, yes, I'm sure it will. But the same could be said of Photoshop, or really any program in the Adobe library. But instead, most artists use these Adobe products to improve their work. The same goes for AI. Things change. You can't stop that. What you can do, instead of hating on AI on principle, you could use it to better your own work, to better your own life, as many artists are already doing. We can't stop the march of time. All we can do is make the best of it. And as someone who loves sci-fi, and therefore the future, and the innovation it will bring, I am trying to embrace this change and make it work not just for me, but give you, my viewers, better entertainment. I want to use it to better all of our lives. Is that such a bad thing? So go ahead and let me know what you think in the comments, but please try to be civil. Thank you for listening. Hey, thanks for watching. I really appreciate you staying this long, and since you did, hopefully that means you like my channel. So I'd really appreciate it if you would like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe, so I can see you back here for the next one. Take care.